Year 10. Um, here's the lesson that I should have put up uh, last week on yesterday on absolute values. Now, to understand absolute value, you've got to, you need to have an idea about what actual absolute value means. In mathematics, we use positive and negative to say direction. So usually negative is to the left, positive is to the right, but it can also be up and down when we're talking about north and south. So when we say absolute value, we're not worried about direction. So if I said to you, find the absolute value, so uh, if x, the absolute value of x equals 2, we're saying, well, how far is 2 units from 0? Well, you can go two units this way, one, two, or you can go two units that way, negative one, negative two. So there are two answers. So x can equal plus or minus two. There are two solutions. They're only asking, they're saying, what is the, and another word that you might hear bandied about, what is the modulus? What, is, what are the values? that have a modulus of two from the origin. And there, that means what are the points that are exactly two units away from the origin on the number line? And that's positive two and negative two. Now, if you understand that, and you understand that whatever is in the absolute value sign can be positive or can be negative, you're away. Okay, so if we're gonna graph y equals x, absolute value of x. That means we can have y equals negative x, or we can have y equals positive x. There are two lines. Please remember, whenever you're drawing an absolute value, you're drawing two straight lines. So if I draw y equals x, that's all right. We know that that's like that. And y equals negative x, well, that is that. But because we've got the absolute value signs, we only want the positive bits. So we don't need that bit and we don't need that bit. And that's why it calls the absolute value of x. If we wanted the negative bits, if we wanted the negative bits of that, we would write, oh, graph the negative part and already smart kids are going, oh, well, that'll just be the bit that you crossed out. So there's y equals negative x. If you put the negative inside, watch what happens. If you put the negative inside, y equals negative x. Well, what does that give you? Well, you have y equals the negative negative x or y equals the positive negative x. Oh, that's just y equals x, and y equals negative x. Oh, it's exactly what we drew in the very first one. That's a terrible one. We'll do that again. And I'm going to use this this time. That one. And I'll do it again on the other side. There you go. So, they should have the same gradient. I'll do that one again because it looks a bit bad. Okay. That's a bit better. Righto. So, now you need to remember what happens when you add, when you add one. It just moves everything up one. So, it's this graph here moved up one. So we'll put one there and we'll uh, oh, it's not going to get there. That's not going to get there either. This is now being fiddly. Let's try and get that. Uh, 
And we'll go the other one. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it'll have to do. Oh, that's awful. Look, I'm going to get rid of all that. And I'm just going to do freehand there and there. All right. Well, what does minus 2 do? It just moves the, the graph up here down 2. Okay. So now I'm going down 1, 2. I've got that. Oh, that's awful. And that. But, all right, I better, that's what it looks like. I know that's 2, but what are these values? How do I find them? Well, let, let y equals 0. And I get 0 equals absolute value of x minus 2. Add the 2 over. 2 equals absolute value of x. Now, what is that? It just means it can equal plus or minus 2. Oh, so that is positive 2, and that is minus 2. What's happened here? Well, I've got the negative curve, which we drew up here, this one, the negative curve, and I've moved up 2. So I've got the upside down version, so I'm going to go, make this a bit bigger, 1, 2. I've got the upside down version. Now, because it's symmetrical, we know that's two. Oh, by the way, that's negative two. That was bad. What are these two values? Ah, well, you're going to say, oh, it's just the same as the other one, so that's positive two and that's negative two. Let's prove it though. Let y equal zero. And I get 0 equals negative absolute value of x plus 2. Take the 2 over the other side. Negative 2 equals negative absolute value of x. Divide by the negative. 2 equals the absolute value of x plus or minus 2 equals x. Right up. Remember when we first started this and I said, you can plot points if you really want. All right, you can plot points. But this one is particularly hard. So there are two ways to do this. There are two ways to do this. The first way, and I'm going to do the first way, and then I'm going to rub it out and do the second way, because the second way is actually easier. So we're graphing two lines here. So we've got y equals 2x minus 1 plus 1. And we can have the negative of that or the positive of that. So I can have y equals negative 2x minus 1 plus 1, which is negative 2x plus 1 plus another 1. Did you see how that, negative times that, and negative times that gave me a plus? Which means I get y equals negative 2x plus 2. And I can graph that. So that's the negative bit. What about the positive bit? Well, that's just y equals 2x minus 1 plus 1. Oh, y equals 2x. So I've got these two equations that I've got to plot. Well, minus 2x plus 2, minus 2x plus 2, it's 1, 2, it's going to go through 2, it's got a gradient of 2, so it's pretty steep. So it's going to come screaming down there. Actually, I'm going to rub that out because I'm going to do it in parts. It's going to come screaming. Oh, gee. I want to dot it because there's going to be parts of it that we don't need. What about y equals 2x? Well, it's going to go through 0, and it's going to have the same slope. So it's coming up here. Now, when you're drawing absolute values, you only need the part where they intersect. 
So we need this bit and this bit because we've got the positive part of it. That's the graph we need. We know that that is 2 because it's this part of that y-intercept there. But the key point is to find this. Where does it bounce? Now, to find where it bounces, to find where it bounces, you can do all sorts of things. We, we can solve simultaneously, which you haven't done yet. All right? You haven't done yet, but you will do. And you're going to be doing it very shortly if you're in my class in the next two weeks. So to solve simultaneously, solve simultaneously. We're going to call this equation number one. And we're going to call this equation number two. And we're going to sub equation number one into equation number two. So I'm going to put that wherever there is a y. So I'm going to get minus 2x plus 2 equals 2x. I'll put that bit there. Now, it's an equation. And I'll just take that 2x over the other side. 2 equals 4x. I divide by the 4. 2 over 4 equals x. And that means x equals a half. Well, if I've got the x value, so I know that uh, this point here is a half, how do I find the y value? I just sub x equals a half into either of those equations. And I think I'll do it into two. And I'll get y equals two times a half, which equals one. So this is the point, a half and one. Now that's one way to do that equation. All right, that's one way to do that equation. But another way to do it, we'll get rid of all this, another way to do it. And this is, if you can think like this, it's going to save you so much time. So, and this is where you get really smart. If I'm going to graph y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 1, plus 1, and that's really ugly absolute value sign. I can just plot this and move it up one. And plotting 2x minus 1 is easy. I just take the negative and positive. So I'm going to plot y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 1, move it up 1. So I'm going to go the negative y equals negative 2x minus 1, which is negative 2x. And watch what happens when the minus goes in here, minus 2x minus minus 1 plus 1. The positive is just going to be y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, so they've got the, they've got the same gradient. Good. Now, let's plot this one first, this one here y equals minus 2x plus 1. Well, it's going to go through positive 1. And minus 2x means it's coming down. It's pretty steep. Oh, I'm going to dot it because we're only going to need part of it. Now, this one, 2x minus 1. Well, 2x minus 1 is going to go through minus 1. And it's going to go through here. And it's going to bounce on the x-axis. So to find that point, this is why this makes it easier. To find the intersection I'm just going to let 
y equals zero in either of those equations. So let's do this, the one on the right, zero equals two x minus one. Bring the one over, one equals two x, x equals half. So that point there is a half. Now remember, we don't want that graph. We've got to move it up one. So the graph we want, that's going to move up one, so that's going to be there. That's going to move up one, so that's going to be at two. And it's just going to be parallel. Now, isn't that a much easier way to draw that graph? rather than the first method. Remember, you can always plot points. Now the final one, I only put this in because I wanted to give some people a challenge. This is really interesting. You can plot, you can plot points, right? And there are solutions in there if you want to plot points. But remember, y equals the absolute value of x, Plus x. By the way, you should have a go at this and then come back and see how you go. I'm going to take the negative of that and I'm going to take the positive of that. So I'm going to get y equals negative x plus x. That gives me y equals zero. We'll plot that in a minute. And over here, over here, I'm going to have y equals positive x plus x, which is 2x. Well, let's draw those. Here's y equals 2x, pretty steep. And here's y equals 0. Ah, and they meet there. So we want the top part, so we need that and that. That is interesting. That is interesting. But you don't have to do that. I'm not going to ask you anything as difficult as that in the exam. Anyway, that's exponential functions. As long as you can graph the basic ones, you should be okay. That one there, that's a difficult one and it's a test to see if you can follow the method that I did.